Happy holidays and welcome back to Larry's Furries, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So we are, as you know, in the middle of the holiday season. It is the seventh day of Hanukkah. You know, Christmas is approaching as are some of the less known as seasonal holidays such as Kwanzaa. And one characteristic that all these festivities have to do with each other is that they're centered around the concept of light. So with Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, we light candles. Christmas, of course, decorate Christmas trees. <laughs> and, and the concept of light is, a, is also very important in the natural world. Plant, you know, plants and animals and everything else depend, depend on light to some extent. And of course, in most cases, this is just referring to sunlight. However, there are very, various animals and uh, fu fungi and some other things that, that are luminescent, or bioluminescent. They, they are living things that generate their own light. And so, to, to, to celebrate our holiday season, we're going to examine one of those for today's Larry's Furry. And let's get started with that. Now. So, Kingdom Animalia, of course, they're animals. Phylum Chordata, so we're dealing with a vertebrate, and in particular, we're not doing something like a firefly. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing a vertebrate, and then class level, you'd expect to still be familiar. And then, what the heck is this? All right. So, elementary school level science, you probably learned that the vertebrates divide into five major groups: mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. How? Today we are dealing with a fish, but fish is not an acceptable category from a modern scientific perspective. And the reason why is because in science we classify animals in, according to their evolutionary history. So things that are more closely related to each other in ev terms of evolutionary descent belong in the same category. However. Fish are the oldest groups of vertebrates. Uh, every, everything else, uh, reptiles, amphibians, birds, mammals, ultimately descend from them. And so that means that if we wanted to create a, a class of all fish, they would actually be identical to phylum chordata because it would, it would have to include all of the other groups because the, the mammals and reptiles and such are all, are all more, more closely related to the fish from an evolutionary perspective than the fish are related to each other. So that doesn't work. So in this case, we have, we have the fishes divided into several classes, and today we are looking in cla class Actinopterygii, which, which are the ray-finned fishes. So in other words, the fish, they have, they have the fins, they're supported by uh, spiny, you know, spiny structures. And w within that, <laughs> that class, we're looking today at order Lophiformes. So the Lophiformes are the anglerfish, which are an entire order of, of, fi of fishes that, that are bioluminescent, that produce light. And in and in particular, all these fish is are carnivores, and they use their light to lure in prey. So, so we've already got a huge group of light-generating animals, but we want to focus on specific species and stay the holiday theme. So I think I got one that'll do that. We're, look, we're moving down into family Linofrinidae, which which are sometimes known as a left left fence or net devils. So net devil is just sort of an appearance category. Left vent is a bit more of interesting of a common name for it. It refers to the fact that all that the distinguishing an anatomical feature of this family of fishes is, is that is that all of them have anuses that point to the left. <laughs> interesting trivia, but that's how, how science goes. <laughs> Uh, and the, our particular fish is a li linofrine arboriferae. So, sometimes called the illuminated net devil, or as I like to call it, 
the Christmas tree fish. And here's why. Here is why. Well, just take a, take a look at that, and you see the tree-like structure on the, on the, on attached to the bottom of it, and which is, of course, the distinguishing feature it gives its, its species name. Arborifera means tree-bearing, and you can see why. <laughs> that looks very much like a conifer tree. But the, these are... So, with, the, with these fish... There's a very large distinction in shape between males and females, as you see both of them drying. The, the females are much, are much bigger, three, up to three inches long, whereas the, the males are less than one inch long. The females are carnivores. They, as, as with all the other angler fish, they, they lure prey using, using bioluminescent structures. And they have two of them. The main, the main lure is called is the bulb-shaped thing up top called the called the esca, and uh, the protrusions from the bottom, the tree-shaped ones, are called are known as barbels, but and they are also bioluminescent. So hence, hence my suggested name of Christmas tree fish because it because it's a tree-like a fish with a tree-like structure that glows like a Christmas tree. <laughs> and the other interesting thing about as, as we said, the males and the females are structurally different, and the males do not have the ability to, to, eat on their, to eat on their own or basically survive more than a few months on their own at all. What, they, what the males do is that, they, is that they attach themselves permanently to the body of a female, sort of the way parasites would, so they're gaining their nutrition from the female host. And... It's, of course, it's not really a, a parasitic relationship for two reasons. One is, of course, it's within the same species, and the other is that the female does get some benefit because she gets the male sperm in order to reproduce. This, for this, pat this pattern of, uh, of uh, big females and little parasite-like males is common among several different anglerfish groups, including this species. And, all right, and so where the, where these live, and these particular fish live in the bathypelagic zone. So it's very deep water, one to three kilometers below the surface. And as far as we know, they're found they're found in the Atlantic Ocean. We, we haven't found them anywhere anywhere else. But on the other hand, we haven't been looking that hard because humans very rarely go that deep underwater for anything. And, and for the same reasons, because we just don't go that deep, we don't have very many pictures of this species, because we don't we don't see them much. So that's why I had to settle for the for the uh, hand drawn Im images of of them. There's you know there's not very many photographs in existence, and none none of those that I could find are publicly available. So I was not a, I'm not about to pay licensing for photos to u to use in these videos. So nobody's paying me to make them. So we go we go with the drawing which is available. And not only do we do we not have very many good images of the species, but we really don't even know how many of them there are in the world. So we do, so it, are they are they commonplace? Are they endangered? We don't know because we don't. Get, we just don't spend enough time down that deep in the ocean, and so we have no, we have no clue uh, how com common anything is down there. So, so we ha ultimately th this species and most and just about every every other form of deep, deep ocean life is quite a bit mis to to a great extent mysterious. Just because because we don't have enough information, because we don't go there. <laughs> so, but our sources of what information we do have. So I'm in, introdu introducing a, a new source, first time used here, the World Register of Marine Species, the official database of everything that lives in the water. Very useful scientific reference. And of course, in addition to that, good old, filling in with the good old Wikipedia, not the not the greatest source in the world, but lots of information at about the level of detail I need for this. 
And as I said, because I'm using images that are publicly available, so public, public domain image, and the, the drawing of the fish was by Dr. Tony Ehrling, one of the scientists who actually studied these things, and he, he generously distributed his fish, uh, his drawing under, under a Creative Commons share life license, which means that I can use it and likewise distribute my video. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ailing, and thank you, thank you, everyone, for for listening. Have a have a great day, and once again, happy holidays.